Solving general chemistry problems. Thermodynamics. For millennia, metal workers have hardened steel objects by plunging them into a cooling bath to lower the temperature quickly and freeze in specific atomic structures that have a greater hardness. Here is a picture of a horseshoe being quenched in a bucket of water. This is done to not simply cool it off quickly, but it actually makes the steel harder and more useful in its desired role. Look at this picture and think about what will be happening. Obviously, the horseshoe is going to cool off. Also, the water is going to warm up. Further, a larger piece of metal will tend to warm the water up more. And we can imagine that if the metal is left in the water long enough, they will at some point reach the same temperature. In industry, the quenching process must be carefully controlled to produce consistent results. Often the rate of cooling is important and mineral oils of various mixtures are used to slow down the process when compared to water. But water is often used. We want to relate the temperature changes experienced by the metal and the water to each other and to their respective heat capacities. The key principle to appreciate when tackling these problems is that any heat that leaves the metal must enter into the water. We will start by equating the heat flow, but getting the sign right is critical. The heat leaves the steel and enters the water. The two must be of the opposite sign. So we write that Q water must equal the negative of Q steel. Recall further that this heat flow is related to the heat capacity and the temperature change by the expression Q equals C delta T, where Q is the heat flow, C is the heat capacity, and delta T is the change in temperature. So here is a problem. A piece of steel, mass of one kilogram, is heated to 900 Celsius and plunged into a bucket of water, 10 liters, at 20 Celsius. When it is pulled out a short time later, its temperature has dropped to 100 Celsius. What is the temperature of the water at that time? The principle involved here is that the heat flow out of the metal must equal the heat flow into the water. We express that mathematically as Q water equals minus Q steel. And we can expand this with the heat capacity equation to read C water delta T water equals minus C steel delta T steel. Now we will have to look up the heat capacity values for these materials. On Wikipedia for water, we get 4.1813 joules per Kelvin gram. Now steel is a bit more complex because the various alloys can have different values. A common stainless steel is known as 304. Its heat capacity is 0.502416 joules per Kelvin gram. Note that both of these are the specific heat capacity for these two materials. We need to incorporate the mass of each to get the two heat capacities. Now the mass of the steel is easy. It's given in the problem one kilogram. But the water is given in the problem as a volume rather than a mass. What do we need to know about water to turn the volume into a mass. Well, the property of density is what we need. We look it up and find that for water, the density at 25 Celsius is 0.99705 grams per milliliter. Now, this is a useful thing to remember. The density of water is very close to one gram per milliliter, which would be equivalent to one kilogram per liter. So we can expect these 10 liter of, of water to be very close to 10 kilograms in mass. In fact, they weigh 9.9705 kilograms. We can find the two heat capacity values. First, for the steel, take 0.502416 joules per Kelvin gram times one kilogram times a thousand grams per kilogram to get 502.416 joules per Kelvin. That for water is a little longer as we need to make the volume and density conversions. Take 4.1813 joules per Kelvin gram times 10 liters times 0.99705 grams per milliliter times a thousand milliliters per liter, getting 41,689.65 joules per Kelvin. Now what about the delta T terms? Well, delta T is always T final minus T initial. The thing to watch out here is that delta T is not largest minus smallest. Delta T can be positive or negative. Delta T steel equals T final steel minus T initial steel. Delta T water equals T final water minus T initial water. We can substitute some numbers in here. Three of these temperatures were given in the problem. The fourth is the answer we are seeking. 
delta T steel equals 100 minus 900 equal to minus 800 degrees Celsius. Be sure to remember that the starting temperature is 900 and the ending temperature is 100 for the steel. The change in temperature is a minus 800 because the temperature drops. By contrast, delta T water equals T final water minus 20 degrees Celsius. The final water temperature is the solution to the problem we are seeking. So we substitute all of this into the expression C delta T equals minus C delta T. We have 41,689.65 joules per Kelvin times T final water minus 20 equals 502.416 joules per Kelvin times minus 800. Rearrange to solve for the final water temperature. Minus 502.416 divided by 41,689.65 times minus 800 plus 20 equals 29.6 degrees Celsius. This is the answer to the question. Really? Cooling down that chunk of steel from 900 down to 100 only raised the water temperature by less than 10 degrees? Why is that? Look at the heat capacity of the two substances. The heat capacity of this amount of water, 10 kilograms, is almost 83 times greater than for this amount of steel, 1 kilogram. Water has one of the highest heat capacities around. Now, consider a slight adjustment to the question. Rather than remove the steel horseshoe when its temperature is 100, what would be this final temperature if you left it in the water until the water and steel reached the same final temperature? The difference in the problem to note is that while we do not know the final temperature of the steel as we did in the first problem, we do know that it is the same as the final water temperature. The delta T expressions are written in this way. T steel equals T final minus 900 and delta T water equals the same T final minus 20. We substitute all that we know into the C water delta T water equals minus C steel delta T steel expression. 41,689.65 joules per Kelvin times T final minus 20 equals minus 502.416 joules per Kelvin times T final minus 900. Divide through with the 41,689.65 term, simplify that expression, note how the units nicely cancel out and multiply through the T final minus 900 term. We have T final minus 20 equals minus 0 0.012051 times T final plus 10.846 degrees Celsius. Gather the T final terms together, add them up, divide through to solve for T final. We get that 30.846 divided by 1.012051 equals 30.5 degrees Celsius. This is the final temperature and is the answer to this second version of the problem. Now remember that this is all based on the expression C delta T equals minus C delta T. Can you see how important this minus sign is in order to have the math work out right? It must be there because the heat entering the water is equal in magnitude but of opposite sign to the heat leaving the steel.